Uh, first, uh, first of all, so a very fast uh, introduction towards myself. Is who am I? I sit and the I, I'm the advisor for Humanology Centre Bahad. Currently, I'm also put as a productivity champion for uh, Malaysia government, and also I've written uh, a, a, a number of books, which in the area range from the non-verbal communication to the leadership to the area of marketing. And also uh, the latest book that I've written recently is known as Predictable Accident, Accident Nudging into Safety and Health. So those are the uh, books that I, I'm, it would publish by very soon, stay tuned with us. And not only that, I see in more than 10 international uh, board uh, for journal publication. So, uh, so that is my uh, background. So first of all, before we start, it's very important that people talk about marketing. And, but do you really know what is marketing? And a lot of assumptions saying that marketing is about the sales, marketing, we talk about the uh, preparing marketing correctural, how to prepare the program to sell to other people, to share with other people. Would this be the right way of describing marketing? The answer is no. For me, marketing, I've been lecturing the a, a subject of marketing more than 10 years in, in Putra Business School previous, previously and before I hijacked uh, to the industry. So for me, it's a bit of different because uh, for most of the lecturers, they are from industry. Then after that, after that they go to academy. Okay. So uh, whereas for my side, it will be different. I'm from academy, academy background as a lecturer, as a professor, then I venture out to the industry to see the differences between the academic world and also now as a practitioners uh, in the industry. So that's why if it's in the university, so they will still call me prof. So in case in the industry, I try not to use the word prof. The reason why, once your title, this is what we call marketing, is it? So once you use the title of prof, people will label you, oh, you are the theoretical one. So you would not be able to, to do any work. So they will label human being. This is what we call perception. Perception play very important in marketing. That's why in your uh, subject of the uh, consumer behavior. So you will study one topic itself, what is called perception. So because of that, so I'm, I'm, I'm venturing into another book that I'm looking into. How do we play with perception? How do we use rumors management to manage perception? And remember, human do digital making not 100% based on the data that you have. But most of the time, it's based on perception. They don't even really analyze it. Those data talk about data analytics and others. Yeah, it's for the planning, it's for the decision making, and also reduce the risk when you plan for the marketing strategy, evaluate the ROI and the others. But when you want to deal with the customer, you have to talk about the perception. The picture shows that one interesting thing, the role of the marketer is how you are able to make a cute, childy customer to look great so that you are able to serve them and you are able to reach them. How do you able to make them happy? So that is what we call my definition of marketing. How do you brand it? How do you package it so you're able to reach the heart of the customers? So in the year of uh, this book, I've, I've written this book, Starting Heart and Soul, when I was still the professor of marketing in Putra Business School, uh, together with that uh, Prof Samsina. During that time, Prof Samsina was a dean of the, for the uh, faculty of economy, Pengurusan. Now she is the uh, vice chancellor for Uni Raza currently, and she already got Datin Sri currently. And for this book, we have uh, we have focused on one basic concept. What is 
because we disagree with the Western style that when you go to do marketing, you have to follow the all the four P principle. You have to analyze the SWOT analysis, spot analysis, so all those type of analysis. Whereas for this book, it's more to Asian. How you are able to sell to Asian? How do you able to serve the Asian? Because Asian is not buying according to logic. For example, Asian have one of the very popular culture. What is the culture? Giving face. For example, if I ask you, how do I look today? Even though in your heart you say, oh my goodness, what is this boring professor talking about? I don't even understand. But when you're being asked, you say, oh, well, it's okay. So because Asian, we live in a different paradigm of it. So that's why this book written clearly, how would you able to reach the heart and also to serve the customer according to what they need and also what they want. The differences between selling the needs and selling the wants, what are they? Should we sell the needs or should we sell the wants? How do we convert wants to the needs and others? How do you handle rejection? All is written clearly in this book. And not only that, but, after the year of 19, uh, 2016, I start to venture into the area of the of, of marketing as well because I have produced more than 50 PhD candidates as students in the area of marketing. But I realized that there is still a gap, okay? Meaning that if I follow the whole marketing principle, talk about market segmentation, branding, selling to uh, B2C, B2B, you talk about marketing collectors, social media marketing, internet marketing, and others. But whatever strategy that you do, you still face human being. So because of this, so I've written another book, it's called Nudge or Fudge. So for this book, we address the interesting part about human behavior and human being. Some of the theory and some of the example, I will show it uh, in, the, in the slide later on. So of course, the next book that I've, I've written together with the uh, Director General of Malaysia Productivity Corporations, uh, which is the Dato Abdul Latif. So in the, in the book of The Humane Way, which is focusing on how do you apply strategy to reach the heart of customer. At the same time, how would you able to change their behavior and according to what you want, actually. I will say that if a good marketer is a very, very dangerous people, the reason why, because they are able to change your behavior without you realize it. There is a skill that all the marketers and all the consumer behavior specialists would have it. So let me talk about this. Have you ever seen go to a garage which is totally empty. Or let's imagine this scenario. One day, you go to a garage, then because your, uh, your car comes up with a very strange noise, you go there. And the person, very simple, they, op, uh, they check your car, then after that, they take the hammer and knock, bang, 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 three sounds, sufficient. Then they tell you, okay, now I'm gonna charge you 500 ringgit. Of course, in your heart, my goodness, you just not three not, then charge me 500, you do not feel satisfied. But what happened if I change the scenario, okay? You send your car, I tell you this statement. Sir or Dr. Abdullah, your car need to be, uh, you need to leave your car here, you know? Because uh, I will take some time to check first and uh, Tomorrow you come back, okay. Actually, after you leave the door, leave the garage, I also use the same method, take the hammer and knock, bang, 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 three sound. Then tomorrow when you come, I say, so, Dr. Abdullah, Mr. Vincent, ah, your car now uh, is uh, totally okay now, so you just have to pay me 500 ringgit. And during this scenario, what happened? You feel very happy because you solve your issue but can you see that the mechanism of me doing that remain the same, which is 
I not three not with a hammer. But the first scenario, you don't feel satisfied. The second scenario, you feel happy. Why? That is what we call consumer behavior. Have a look. Let's say this coming Saturday, you want to bring your wife or girlfriend to a restaurant. When outside from the restaurant, you see this scenario, okay? And the next door, you see this scenario, okay? So you have plenty of time and well, which shop would you choose, okay? I will say that most of the key people, they will choose the one with human. The reason why, because when you see a shop without any single customer, they feel that, could it be this shop has certain issue? Would it be charged too high? Would it be the food is not good? Would it be, there's so many, would it be, could it be, or so many perceptions. Human minds start to be very uh, reactive to labor with the scenario, with the answer inside our heart. Of course, the scenario could be different that you are rushing to go to work, so of course you will choose a restaurant which is less people. So that would be the different, uh, what is it called, uh, different scenario. So whereas for normal human being, they will prefer to a place with at least one or two human being there. This is what we call social norms actually. They follow the herd effect in the area of consumer behavior. So, but, after COVID-19, the scenario might change. We will not know, okay, because we are, no research has been done yet, okay, because now if you see a crowded restaurant, I would rather to go to the last people restaurant now because of, uh, I, don't want, I don't want to get uh, trouble into a restaurant. If after I take my lunch, the next uh, next 14 days, they call me, Dr. Liu, you are invited for the COVID test. So that is something I do not want. So that's why, why are the consumer behavior change uh, after the COVID-19? It could be different that I will not be able to answer you currently. Whereas recently, we did a research uh, among customers as well on the retail, uh, on the retail of uh, a brand. Would you go still go to the shop or would you buy online? So we will share with you, I will share with you uh, if I still got time by the end of the session. Have a look of these two. Can you see? Hi, well, guys, I, so I need some response, yeah? Okay, let me, okay. I need them some, uh, I need you all to, to type the answer out. Oh, oh, oh I, you'll, see the, you'll see the answer. This uh, black color in the middle, is it the same size or is it a different size? Okay, see, you've seen the answer. Actually, for figure A and figure B, most of the human being will say that the black dots, the black circle in figure A is smaller. And whereas the figure B is bigger. There is a normal perception that human beings have actually. But, in reality, have a look. Number one, number two, both are the same size. What is the moral story behind this? The moral story behind simple, this is what we call marketing. It's not so much about the product, whether your figure A black dot or figure B black dot, but it's how you are going to design the marketing strategy so it will look great. That's what we call the marketing is about. It's what we call the consumer is about. We play with your perception. As simple as that. All right. Before I proceed with more to us talk about consumer, consumer, and consumer, what about the nature of human itself the consumer, when we talk about marketing, always remember consumers are illogical. What does it mean? Very simple. If one day, if you want to buy a pen, uh, a pen, all right? So this shop is selling as four ringgit and 
of 20 cent another another uh what is that what uh uh 200 meters away there's another stationary shop is selling at uh four uh, four ringgit 20 cent difference you might willing some consumers in order to save costs they might uh what is that they might travel to walk for 100 uh, meter of 200 meter just only to save 20 cents but sometimes if you want to buy a product 1000 ringgit and 1005 ringgit even though the difference is 5 ringgit all right i repeat difference are 5 ringgits but people say it is okay la why because consumer are illogical another example ask yourself how many body do we have we only have one body but how many shirts that you have and at the same time go back and look at your own uh storage how many shirts that you didn't wear for a period of time so ask yourself do you think it is a need you buy because of need or do you think you buy because of the want so please have uh spend some time to reflect your own behavior because you also a consumer the second characteristic will come to human being human are greedy that's why sometimes we play with the strategy buy one free two then in reality the finance people already tuck in the price for you to purchase but you buy it happily don't you feel that something's not right about human being next one you want to be special so that's why uh you always being cheated with the limited edition so they tell you this one worth one thousand because it's only 20 in the world so you want to be special you want to show to your friends i own a limited editions so you purchase it so that's why consumer want to be special so next of course consumer are emotional so because of this is a very common for a lot of marketing strategies if you go to a, uh, a car road show all right uh, uh, at the supermarket or any place car road show what could you observe so there will you will observe they will have a pretty lady standing there and also representing the car if it's just only selling the car why do i need a lady that uh what is that called uh i, I will use the word you know so very sexily to sell that because they talk about emotional selling they want to play with human emotion similarly when you have us when you want to train your salesperson in the future so you have to train your salesperson to make the customer to feel emotion they buy because of the emotion not they buy because they need it so that's why i always say marketing subject is the most unethical subject because you're selling human weak points of it and not only that customer love feel uh, loves to feel good practice if you feel if you if you're being phrased you when you go to a shop so they say that okay for example they say that wow you wear this you look so special it's really suitable for you blah 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 definitely even though you want you actually you don't need it because you feel that i feel guilty so never mind lah i just buy one unit because of the feel good feel good factor and also beauty your emotion feel guilty because the person says so oh, much time to serve you so you feel guilty of course customer can be nudged easily meaning that we can change consumer behavior easily all right now you have to remember differences between in the textbook we talk about marketing research I remember when I was still lecturing in Putra Business School, we always tell the customer, first week we'll talk about the basic of marketing. We introduce different terms in the area of marketing. Second week, so for the master program, yeah, I'm talking about master and PhD program. Second week, we start to talk about marketing research. 
for you to understand what the customer wants and customer needs. So you try to uh, uh, get the, uh, the, 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 when you do the customer research, so you look at what is the customer such, uh, segmentation, what is the cus uh, customer purchase behavior, then you talk about the uh, four Ps, after marketing collateral, then marketing channel, how do you do branding? So those are the areas in marketing research. That I would say that for academic, good to learn, okay, because I've learned it, I'm still lecturing that, but when you go out to the society, to the real, I would say, the, 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 the business world, this is the one that is needed. What is it? Compassion management or compassion marketing. It's not about what you are going to sell, Okay, if the customer feels they got cheated, they will say bye-bye and sayonara to you forever. So that's why when you sell, you have to sell compassion. And also people buy not because of the product sometimes, because people buy, consumer buy because of the story behind the product. I'm very sure you've heard of it. So if you want to know more, please go back to your lecturers later on, what is called selling with storytelling. So that's one of the very common in the market now. And if you look at the, uh, now today people goes to TikTok, am I right? And some of them, they use uh, TikTok become a marketing tool as well. TikTok is the one that I mentioned, the example of selling with stories and compassions that, I don't want to elaborate more because or else they will take me for a few hours to be uh, to talk about the compassion marketing. That's it. So now I would like you to think, how would you help the marketing manager? So let's say you are managing now, as you know that uh, the gym, also, uh, they, under, they, they, they suffer a lot because uh, there is a limited uh, limited space, so not everybody can go to, uh, but it's not, they enter the gym, they have to do a lot of SOP and others. So to sell the package is not easy. Just assume, yeah, so I know that it will not be so cheap. So this is just only an example. Let's say for this scenario, Monday subscription, one month gym usage, 100 ringgit. Okay, then for one year, so 12 subscription, so a 12 months usage, Plus, exclusive membership also with sauna and we provide you with nutrition meal before you go back. So we give you a meal that help you to slim down and also the others, you see. So it's a uh, thousand, uh, thousand two. Of course, with this COVID-19, so people will feel that, wow, one thousand two, ah, a lot. Oh, so by the end of it, they will say that I go for one month. La. Then later on, after a few, because we're human like this. When you start to go for the gym, during first month, you're very motivated, I can tell you. Okay, you will go frequently. Huh? During second month, the graph of motivation will come to as a human being. So it drop and drop and drop. How would you able to maintain? After a few months, I, yo, I still have to pay 100 ringgit. Ah, so better not to go. La. So by the end of it, I end my subscription. When I end my subscription, the company does the, the gym uh, the gym center would not be able to earn 1000 how are you going to help them remember this this strategy i know that for traumas i'm going to give them the benefit for sauna okay exclusive membership they might have a swimming pool whatever it is and nutritional meal okay if you want to push the trauma subscription all right, assuming that, I repeat, assuming that the consumer have money, all right? If you say that, oh, the person do not have money to eat, of course, don't talk about all this subscription. They will not join gym as well. It's for the survival stage. How would you change the, the uh, what is that called? The package so that you're able to push for the trauma subscription. The method is simple. Have a look of it. I just put, Okay, the same, one month, 100, 12 months, 1,200, uh, 1, but I put another one, it's called premium subscription. Same price, then with 
more benefits. This impact will definitely will see that oui, first they will say, oui, why the price for the yearly subscription and the premium subscription will be the same? That's the first question. Okay, so by the end of it, what happened? We will actually gear human behavior to go for the yearly subscription or the premium subscription. I would say premium subscription actually. The reason why, if I just put two, as I mentioned just now, two, I will say that because of money saving, so they will go for monthly subscription. But if I plan in this way, people will view it as, why not think about it? So I will have more extra. So if they afford to pay for the 12 months, they will go for the 12 months subscription. So this is one of the examples. Looking at the example, look at this. This is the one of the, uh, this another example I'd like to share with you now. Use the same marketing principle that I shared just now into this. This is the magazine by Humanology. It's actually, it's free, yeah? You can download from the, you can download from the, what is that called? From Google Play Store, actually. You go to Google Play Store, you click book, you type human authorial, you can download all this for free. But I just make it as the uh, training and also sharing purposes. Let's say, pick up one of these, printed $59.90, online $39.90. So you will say that, okay, so some of you will say that, okay, I want the online, so, so I will go for the online version. So they will say that, oh, I want printed, uh, I want to save cost, I don't want printed. So uh, some of them, they will go for the, uh, it will be distributed randomly, all right? So then by, by the end of it, I will not be able to achieve my goal to push for the higher price one. You see, what am I going to do? I know that printed is $59.90. Online 39.90, I want to push to the higher group, which is I want to gain more profit actually. So, and you know, online version is free actually. There's no cost on that. What am I going to do? This is a strategy. According to research, if you put 59.90 for the printed version, 68% uh, will go for the printed and online 32% because uh, People still want to touch the physical, physical one. Okay, so then, uh, uh, hold on. Uh, sorry, I think I misplaced of this, yeah? So actually for the, for the online version, it's actually the 68. If I put online version only, it's 68. If I put printed version, it's 32. Then from after I come up with the printed and online version, it becomes 64. Can you see people, people mindset always like this. Printed and online version is the same price with the printed version. Why should I go for it? So it's indirectly people will feel that it's worth of money. So because of that, this method is known as anchoring. The method how we do a form, this is known as choice architecture meaning that how do you make your consumer to choose a product according to the form let's look at another example this is the research done in uk actually talk about organ donation all right so if you could see austria look at the map over here all right austria france hungary spain and sudan sweden so they are considered neighboring country but if you look at the next neighboring country, Germany, okay, Germany is very near to uh, uh, UK as well. Uh, uh, UK, Netherlands, Denmark, there's one group. But Germany, the, 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 the neighbor of Germany include uh, France and the Austria, but they are very high for the organ donation. What actually makes this to happen? What changed the behavior? Why the behavior of organ donors are so different, even though they are neighboring country? Research was done, they found out this. Okay, look at these two. Check the box if you want to participate in the organ donor program. Another one, check the box if you don't want. So, 
human beings always stay at the default stage. What do I mean by default stage? Meaning that if I do not need to do anything, that would be the best. So that's why for the opt-in option, people do not go and tick because it's extra work for me. Maybe during that time, I don't have a pen. Maybe during the time, my mouse is not working. So by the end of it, I will not click the opt-in opt -in method. So when I do not do, go for the opt-in method, so it means that I do not join the program. So that's why if you could see just now over here, the Germany, the uh, UK, Netherlands, they are low because they follow the opt-in method. Nobody click this in the form. Whereas for those high, uh, country, uh, high participation countries like Spain, France, Hungary, they have a uh, use opt-out method and people just stay at the default stage so they join the programs without they realize it. Similarly, okay, this, if you are, if after you graduate, so if you have, have a chance to become a marketing uh, director, so this could be one of the option that how you apply the theory that you see from the other research just now into your own uh, own practical side. Look at this. If you go for now, so today we talk about online, online. So you have to register the email first. You see the differences? Please tick if you want to join the program. Tick. And for this one, I will say that most probably people would not join because after they fill in, they don't want to click because you need me to do extra work. So I stay at default, then I would not join. So if you design your form in this method, so by the end of it, the participation would reduce. If compared to this one, please tick if you do not want to join the program. And in reality, in, uh, in industry, all these small, small things, the, the, this statement, please stick if you want to join, please stick if you don't want to join, they purposely put in the form of fine print. You know what's fine print? Fine print meaning that they purposely make it smaller. When it becomes smaller, so you're not able to see it. When you're not able to see it, so by the end of it, you stay at the default stage, you join the program without you realize it. This is exactly what did by Ben de Gara last year. Last year, when Ben de Gara would like to start the uh, Do It Now, Do It Now program, okay? There's one program by government initiative, it's known as Do It Now. If you have uh, any of the bank, so when you first log into the, when they start to launch that program, when you log into your bank account, they want pop up. One pop up, then they will say, if you do want to participate, please click and uh, fill in the form. Most of the people, they will just close, uh, what is that called? Uh, close the pop-up. When you close the pop-up, meaning that you already automatically enroll into the program. Can you see or not? So that's why how you design the form, how you do the, uh, what is that called? How you write the thing, we're able to determine success or failure of your project, actually. So as a marketer, you must be very sensitive towards all this consumer behavior, or we call talk about the marketing collateral when you want to produce it. So this is the example that I mentioned just now. It's called the opt-in, opt-out choice architecture, actually. Have a look. After class, you might, uh, you might go for your lunch. So if you see two menu, all right? Which one that usually people will choose? Number one, same price, yeah? Same price. The premium nasi lemak. The second one, a free one when you buy any food with premium set and show your student card. Definitely, I would say that most human beings, even though same price, same product, everything the same, then people will go for the number two. The reason why the word free attractive okay this is what we call the sample of the consumer behavior people are greedy so that's why they will go for the free one similarly look at this too one coffee five percent sugar another coffee 95 sugar free actually both also the same can you see 
95% sugar free means 5% sugar lah. Then 5% sugar means another 95% sugar free lah. It is the same. But according to research, people prefer 95% sugar free. The reason why feel good factor that I mentioned just now in the, the nature of consumer behavior. Similarly, this is another example. Frozen yogurt, 20% fat and 80% fat free. This is the same concept. In the future, when you work as a marketing manager, you have to be sensitive towards the word use. Because let's say you use 20% uh, 20 fat. Another of your comp competitor use 80% fat free. So by the end of it, your brand and you will not be able to sell the product. Not because of your product, because your, how you brand it, how you write it, how you prepare your marketing collateral, and also how you do product differentiation. Because when I'm, I'm very sure in your marketing class, you have learned what is called POP and POD. Part of difference and part of parity. Part of difference means that how different you are. So for us, our uh, coffee is 95% sugar free. You see, for a parity, actually we have 5% of sugar. It is the same actually, but consumer will perceive it differently. So that's what we call the framing effect. I give you all these terms so that if you want to do more research, if you want to do a master or PhD or, or write a paper on that, so at least you know that what are the past research that has been done. Have a look of these two. Okay, some, which one would you, would you choose? Some of you might say, oh, I would choose apple if you like apple, but some of you would, would choose an orange if you like an orange. But what if I show you this? Which one? would you choose most of the human being from the research we found out that cause consumer might some of them that previously choose apple now they might might yeah not 100 percent. i repeat they would have some consumer who shift their preference from apple to go to the orange after they see a bad apple. Because the bad apple, in this case, is known as the decoy effect of it. So that's why uh, for those college students, because I know that most of you will be college students, so that's why if one day you have a date, okay, make sure you bring your friend that's not look attractive than you. So it will make you to be, to stand up. You, the people will look at you more handsome, actually, than, then if you go alone, you are handsome. If you bring a guy uh, that is not handsome at all, it makes you more and more handsome. So that is how you apply marketing into market yourself. All right? Talk about this. Another one, another example. When you go to the cinema, okay, seven ringgit for the big popcorn. I, I believe that it's more expensive. Okay. The small one, let's say three ringgit. Okay. What happened? Most of the people, they will say that, oh, I worry your sore throat, so I go for the trainer, small one, you know. How am I going to push the big one? If you're a marketing manager, you have to think of to increase the revenue of the, of the organization. That is your role. How would you be able to help them? Simple. Have a look. Small, three, of course. Uh, you have to make the small one really, really look small. This is not a good picture, yeah? This is not a good picture. All right, the medium one is very similar size to the big one, difference of seven, uh, 50 cents. So by the end of it, when they go to the cinema, they will think, oh yeah, only difference the 50 cents. Uh. Instead of take medium, uh, I take large, la. only difference 50 cents. Value of money. We play with the consumer behavior, greedy. Can you see? So when you are able to play around with the consumer behavior of their weaknesses, then you will be able to win certain strategy of that. Okay, research has been done. So look at this. The choices are not so many as compared to this one. Wow, a lot of choices. In terms of the attractiveness to the customer, if you do this experiment uh, in the future, let's say you, you work in a retail shop in the future, let's say Tesco, whatever it is, 
So which one, which would you, how would you arrange the brand or the rack of, uh, uh, for your store? Have a look. This is a result from a research. If you have only limited choices, 40% of the customer will be attracted to the place. But, yeah, choices. How about guess? You can attract up to 60% of consumer because people will feel curious. Wow, what is happening there? There's so many choices. Why not? I have a look. Whereas it's limited choice, it's so boring, so 40%. No? But when we talk about marketing, attracting customer is important, but the more important is how do we able to make them to buy the product? Because coming to see without buying also nothing, no use, the company would not have ROI, there's not earning a single cent. But whereas, if you buy, uh, what is it called? If you put the right way, you're able to convert their behavior into the purchase. If you can see, if you have limited choice, even though you only have 40% of the customers, 12% is going to buy. The reason why, very simple, because they have determined very limited choice. I also go and see it. So by the end of it, I am going to buy. But because of the attractive, I go there and see. So by the end of it, so the purchase behavior is just only 6% of it. So this is what we call the choice paradox. I'm very sure, okay. Uh, I'm sorry, I take back my word. I'm not sure whether you have been this. This is the Bantan market in uh, in Vietnam. Of course, this is another, the women's street in Hong Kong. And this one. I'm not sure whether you know where is it, okay? I'm not going to tell you that, uh, where is it. If you want to know more, you got my number, you WhatsApp me, I'll reply you. Where is this place actually? The longest night market in Kuala Lumpur. Two kilometer, yeah? Two kilometer. Do you have experience of, uh, if, let's say, assuming that one day you go for the night market, from the one end to another end, you can see actually they're selling at the same product, okay? So then when you first, uh, if you plan to buy uh, uh, a, a certain product, let's say uh, I would like to buy a, co a coconut water, okay, coconut fruits and also uh, keep please or whatever food you want to buy. When you first enter, you look at the price. Oh, this one, two ringgit, 20 cent. Then you see two, uh, two ringgit. Okay, so you say, oh, it means first one more expensive. Then when you walk, 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 walk in the middle, you found that one shop, one ringgit and uh, 80 cent. Oh, yeah, tak payah fikir lah. No need to think so much, I buy. Okay, then after you walk, continue to walk, another shop is selling one ringgit. Alamak. Too bad, I should have done more survey. Have you had this kind of experience? Okay, what is this actually? This is a concept of human always do research, but because we have limited time, limited resources, so we find, do we, have, we have done the research. We should first shop two ringgit 20 cents, second shop two ringgit, two ringgit, we feel that, oh, these are cheaper. Third shop. Wow, one ringgit 80 cent, one ringgit 50 cent, really cheap already. We serve our body self, we satisfy already with the price and we sacrifice to continue to do research for all the shop. So that's why the term is called sat satisfies. So this concept in marketing that always serves it is known as the bounded rational because it's impossible for a consumer to go to do all the survey when you want to shop in shopee let's say shopee or lazada definitely you will not be spending the whole day do just just keep on doing research for one product i uh for example like you want to buy a a a, a, a pointer let's say a pointer yeah so of course you will survey for three shop five shop you will not be able to survey everything but okay when you find something that you feel satisfied Okay, a bit cheaper, you go ahead with it. Because of people, consumer purchase based on satisfied fears. Satisfied mean that if they feel that the price is good enough, satisfy them, so they will go ahead with it. So when you plan your marketing strategy, make sure don't forget this 
concept, especially when you want to plan for your price decision. Have a wild well guess for this one. I'm not going to give you the answer. So if you, if, if you want to know the answer, please contact me, okay? If you're doing, there's two marketing campaign because you're marketing students, okay? First one, campaign A. If you use LED light, you will save 2,000 ringgit a year. If you do not change your LED light, you will lose 2,000 a year. Which campaign is more effective? All right, I'm not going to tell this. Think about that. This is exactly the same to the previous uh, example that I've given. So, and research has been done. Which statement is better to convince customer to buy your LED light? For more information, stay tuned with me. Similarly, I give another example, yeah? So, US, I think everybody knows now, is uh, the most popular topic is called about COVID. Let's say, assuming yet that, yeah? US is preparing outbreak for COVID-19 now. Okay, it's expecting to kill 600,000 people. Which program, uh, choose a program, address the problem? A, 200,000 200, people will be safe. B, one third chance of 600 people and two third chance of no people will be safe. If you calculate clearly, yeah, both also talk about 200,000 people will be safe. And from the research, we found out that 72% will choose option A, 28% will choose option B. Why? Stay tuned with me. I will explain it in a very short while. What happened? This one, remember, the keyword is to save. The keyword is here, will be safe. Positive. Positive. I repeat, positive. When the campaign shows positive value, people like to be, like to be what? Direct. I want to see the figure. I saved 200,000. Okay. The one calculation need me to calculate, use my brain, forget about it. I'm not so much interested. Okay. If it's positive. What happened if this is the advertisement? Going to have 600 people uh, to this, 400,000 people will die and be wanted. Nobody will die. One third means 200,000 will die. Will, uh, nobody will die. Lah. Two third means that 400,000 will die. It's exact, actually, if you look at the logic behind A and B, also the same. A and B, also the same. But do you know what is the statistic that we found? 22% will choose campaign A. 78% will choose campaign B. What is the conclusion? The conclusion is that if your program is talk about negative, try not to tell people directly. You use some connective connection, meaning that let them do some connective calculation, you know. So like one third, two third, whatever it is, let them to think. Only you, you tell them the answer. So remember, in the future, depends on the product that you're going to promote for your company. So let's say, for example, as a marketing, you might be working in the health promotion. You might be working as a PR, com a PR for a company. So if you need to use this skill, please know which statement that you need to write or which statement will make consumer to feel better and which program will be highly accepted. Because the word choice, the statement choice, how you're going to deliver the message out will influence the way of the success or failure of your program, actually. Similarly, if you look at this, Okay, if you're given a chance, a sure 240 or 25% gain. Okay, actually A and B remain the same. For this one, also the same. One is gain, one is lose. Have a well guess for the statistic. For this one, gain, right? People want to see direct 84% will choose program A. Program B, 16%. If it's lose, can you see? People don't want to face the reality of negative things. This is human being. So that's why if you go for the medical checkup, also the same. 
So if you if, if you in the future if you work in a hospital or you work in pharmaceutical industry, for as a marketing as a marketer, you should play around with this. So meaning that people, if it's a benefit after you take this supplement, you will have uh twenty percent of cholesterol reduced directly twenty percent. But if you want to take something lost uh that you lose, okay, this. Uh, uh, this supplement only can uh, only reduce 2% of the sugar level. So, you don't use 2% sugar level. Let them to think a little bit, make them to feel good. Why? We are less likely to risk to gain extra gain. And we are more likely to risk to avoid a sure lose. This, uh, uh, at, the, at, uh, at the bottom here, I wrote there what are the journals that I refer to, yeah? All the example I've given just now is referring to journal. Some of it, we run the research ourselves through the marketing research previously. Which one would you choose? If you go to Laz La, 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 uh, for the copyright issue, because this one come out in the book, yeah? We cannot use Lazada. We cannot use Shopee, okay? So, if Bopi and Lazado come up with this, one free shipping, another one, 10 ringgit, $2 shipping. Same price, right? Same. But customer will still prefer the word free. Always remember how you should play and also put your product if you sell online also. Have a look. What can you see from this picture? Okay. Uh, I hope you are able to see one special thing. Similarly, if you're working in a, uh, in a retail shop, if you place like this, so it's something stand up. So this is what we known as, you are, what is that called? When you are special, you can be remembered easily. Marketing talk about how you want to push the product you want to push actually. This is one of the methods how you arrange a product so that your product can push up. Especially, let's say that part of the product only left six month, six month uh, expiry date. You as a marketing manager, you have to think of how to help the company to push the near expiry product. So this is one of the example. Practical example, look at this one. Package A, package B, package C. All right? So at a glance, definitely you will see you will know that actually which one I'm going to push, which is the package B. The reason why is this concept is uh, like if you are landed in the airport, okay, the airport got two wheels, right? One on the left, one on the right. So human will always choose in the middle so that they, will, they, they, feel, they feel more comfortable in the middle. So that's why package B and some more are enhanced with the concept that I use just now. You are special. You are I make the package B to stand up for you to see it. So that's why you will, you have your mentally, without I tell you that you are, you should choose package B, actually you're somehow like, you focus more on package B rather than package A and C, actually. So that is how, the way, how you uh, brand your product. That's what you learn in the, product planning. Am I right? The first P that you learn in your marketing uh, marketing class, actually. What about this? Okay. So there are two. One is the uh, Nasi Lemak Sedap and Premium and this one. Similarly, this is a concept same like the airport that I mentioned just now. You spend in the middle. Another concept. Okay. I know that not, nothing I need to rush for the time. That's why I go faster. Over here. If you own a house, you say, I will need to sell it at 650000 For sales, next door, you say, I want to buy 500000 Same product. Why do you really let go yours more than when you buy others less? Remember, this is consumer behavior. Always remember, consumer always like this. If it belongs to you, I own it already, I have it already, I feel that the things that I have is more valuable rather than something I don't have it at all. This would be the concept. Have a look. This is another marketing concept. So a, a friend tell you that, okay, this toothpaste is very good. Then you will say, oh, really? So you don't believe it. But if you see yourself, a dentist wearing a uniform tell you, this toothpaste is very good. 
what would you what would the, what would the impact okay when you you yourself will tell your friend the two piece is very good then after that of course that is the power of the references meaning that a lot of people use ambassador or to ask a authority to create the authority bias so that you will able to purchase it similarly for this one another marketing strategy use promotion this is a very common uh, uh marketing strategy use price as a price war but you are able to have to sell but it would not be so if uh impactful if you do like this number one you say the promotional price original price what is the price then I add on with another one. Limit to two per family. Actually, can you see? During promotion, it's only 15 ringgit. When I change the word to 70 ringgit, even though when I add with limited to two per family, actually, as a consumer, they will feel that, sure, memang ini berpaloi minya. Sure, this one is something special. That's why they limit to two. So I take lah. So we play with human psychology. This is scarcity bias similarly another one this is a real example from one of the website that do promotion if one day during new year you say 60 percent promotion another one 50 percent what is the output it would be you will say the ayla i don't want to buy first next day you will see 30 percent sure i don't want to buy and later on you say there would be a, a, a another discount you also would not buy Remember the marketing strategy that you plan throughout the, the year will lead your consumer to buy or not to buy. Because once they're able to see 60%, so they're going to wait for the 60%. So remember how you plan your marketing strategy throughout the whole year. Have to plan it very, very well. Or else you will lead the customer not to purchase your product. This is what we call the inactive initial impact. What about like this? If you are a marketing manager for the pet shop, what are the strategies for you to push all your cats to go out to be to be to be sold? One of the strategy, think about it. So uh, it would be you let the person, the people that come to see the animal, to have adoption uh, adoption strategy. You tell them, okay, why not? This cat seems like this cat really suits you, you know, the cat likes you, and also with the way how they look at you, why not? You you try to take care of the for this cat for one way. So then uh then if it's suitable, then you then they stay with you. If not suitable, you can return it. Money back guarantee. So then after that, this strategy actually, when you bring your cat, the animal back, you play around with the per, with the cat or the pets for one week. You already have some chemistry and also a relationship with the animal. So I am quite sure that you will not return it if from the beginning you're willing to take it to return it because you have the chemistry because you own it already then you want to return it it would be quite difficult so that's what we call the ikea effect actually similarly if you want to give the membership to your customer always remember even though can you see this one also it's a time time stamp actually but if i stamp three stamp in the beginning People will somehow perceive that it is achievable because I already achieved three. They already give me three. So that's why customer motivation can be done by using the way how you design the form. So similarly to the uh, cigarette as well. So I don't want to give this example. Okay. What about this? Two product, same product, 12 ringgit and 11 70. This is talk about price strategy. People will feel that what you know. Why is 67 cents? Yeah. Because usually human behavior, when we learn your marketing, they will use 88 in China, they will use 88. Then after that, in Malaysia, they, the, most of them they will use 99, 9.99, so that the price is less than $10. So I believe your lecturer already shared with you this. But what happened if the price strategy like this? So people will feel that 1167 is something not right. They will spend some time to go and process why 67. So because of that, they might miss a chance to buy your product. Remember, if you are the marketer for the premium product, you can go online to search for all the premium shop, those expensive branded shop. Even though Lorex, uh, one of the example, Lorex website, they will not put the price there. 
because the price will determine the quality of it. That's why if you look at the premium product, there is no 99, there is no, there is no end with 99, there is no end with 88. The reason why, if they put 9988, so people will perceive that is a low, lower class product. So that's why most of the expensive product, they are raw figure because it shows the premium of it. So that's how, how it is. Similarly, this is one research being done that if you take your uh, hard drive for, for what is it called? For, for repair, data recovery. So if you're able to repair one month, uh, recover one month data, so for five, you spend five minutes, so people willing to work up to pay is $50. You are able to rec uh, recover five years data, people willing to pay is $150. But if you put there for more than 12 hours, okay, can you see even the one month data, people willingness to pay increase from $50 to 120 plus dollar. Similarly, from $150 to become the 210 or $20. The reason why, because they feel the um, time that you spend, this is exactly the example that I gave you just now about the garage. You go there and put your car for one day. That is what we call the fairness concept it would be. Ask yourself, if you are given a chance to go to a, a, a place to, to buy a drink, okay? And if you drink at this store, same uh, which one would you be willing to pay more? This is what we call, because you feel that I drink in, the, uh, in, a, in a nice restaurant, Starbucks, you're willing to pay $20 for this wooden, wooden rest or wooden shop. Ah, la te tarik satu ringgit dua puluh sen naik sampai satu ringgit lima puluh sen. Also, you curse and you scold them. But whereas for Starbucks, even though they increase of one dollar, one ringgit, you pay them happily. Why? That's what we call consumer behavior. So most of the time in marketing, we apply nudges. This is one the experiment did in you. It did in overseas actually. They want uh, their staircase and also the escalator over there. They want to encourage healthy lifestyle to make people to, uh, to, to use staircase actually. What they did, they built a musical chair. When you walk their style, so by the end of it, people start to use the, the, the walk through the uh, staircase actually. This is one example. You change a bit of environment, so you're able to uh, move human behavior actually. This is two examples. Both experiments was done in UK. The first experiment is a urinal. They talk about uh, because of they just put a a a a, a, what is a, 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 a a fly on the urinal and they reduce the cleaning uh, of the spritting when a person pee at the meal toilet. Actually, the second one talk about the how do you encourage how do you change the behavior to encourage people to watch hand. So these two are the example of what we call the nudges exercise, meaning that I change a bit of environment so that you will uh, what is called, move into the program of it. So this is one of the book that uh, we not published yet. Uh, we talk about how do we use nudges, just how you see a few examples of nudges like the, uh, the, 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 the staircase, the washing pan, the toilet, and also how do we apply all this into safety and health. And you might not know, in Malaysia, every day, nearly two cases people die at the workplace because of accident. But how we are able to help these people so that as a, uh, as a uh, what is our safety officer, they have to know what they need to do. So when we talk about nudges, so you have to follow five principles. Make sure the nudging program is fun, is easy, attractive, social, and also do it at the right time. For more information, you can read from the a few books I mentioned just now. And at the same time, you can go and download the humanatorial uh, of the uh, on the sixth issue uh, on January 2019 last year. And how do we help Malaysian government on the uh, on uh, on the program that is voluntary disclosure? So you can read the article how the Bagger Hasidam Negeri use nudges into, into a strategy in their application. So always remember that we'll come back to as a marketer, marketing, 
or marketer or the sales manager, they always has one thing. Okay, we, we are the bear over there. We thought our belief and our idea are fantastic. But in reality, the customer is the most important. We always get backfired by the end of it. If you don't plan your marketing well. With this, I end my presentation. So thank you very much for your time.